My in-laws have a very toxic relationship with my husband and it's starting to affect my life. You see, while growing up, my husband used to be the favored golden child and mother-in-law was extremely close to him. Jacob has told me that because his dad used to be quite busy with work, his mother and he spent a lot of time together. But I have noticed that his sister Sarah isn't treated the same way by my mother-in-law. Although I'm sure that mother-in-law loves both her children, I have noticed time and time again that she favors my husband more. I'm sure sister-in-law must have felt that growing up also, which is why my husband has always tried to fill the role by being a good older brother to her and always being there for her. But the thing is that both sister-in-law and mother-in-law would sometimes behave so absurdly that it crossed the line. For example, when we first started dating, Jacob, who was still just a fresh college graduate at that time, and my in-laws, including Sarah, used to live in the same house. My in-laws had given my husband an entirely different floor, so he could have his own privacy and invite whoever he wanted. This is why he would sometimes invite me over to his place to spend the night with him. However, on several occasions during the morning, sister-in-law would barge into our room while we were sleeping without knocking. As you can imagine, sometimes we were not even properly dressed, but she would act like it was completely normal and start talking to Jacob about very random things. This was extremely weird for me, as I was uncomfortable with her seeing me in my lingerie. Before anyone points out, I completely understand that Jacob lived with his family at that time, so I should have expected this. But is knocking on the door before you enter a room really too much to ask for? I guess sometimes siblings can be very close, but she and I didn't even know each other that well when Jacob and I first started dating, hence I found it extremely disrespectful. So, naturally, I talked to Jacob about it and told him that I wouldn't be coming over unless he installed a lock on his door. He agreed, but as you can imagine, sister-in-law who tried to barge into the door the next morning unsuccessfully started yelling at us about why we had the door locked. She started jiggling the door and banging on it, asking her brother to let her in. Jacob finally let her in and she stormed into the room, questioning why he had installed the lock in the first place. When she noticed me, she pointed at me and started yelling at him if it was because of this skank. I was shocked to hear how rude and disrespectful she sounded. Jacob told her that it was him who wanted to install the door lock, but sister-in-law wasn't convinced. She angrily told him that they were siblings and that they shouldn't have any secrets between them. Jacob told her that he didn't have any secrets and that he had installed the lock so that she wouldn't barge in while he and I were sleeping as it was really disturbing. Hearing this, Sister-in-law angrily flipped her head towards me and yelled that this was all my fault and that I was coming in between her and her brother. This all seemed to be a bit too much for me since I am very non-confrontational. So I excused myself to go to the washroom. I could hear her continue to yell and Jacob trying to pacify her. When she was finally gone, he came in to comfort me. He was apologetic for her behavior and assured me that he would talk to her again so she would apologize to me as well. The next weekend when I came over, she apologized to me and gave me a very pathetic excuse that she needed to talk to Jacob very urgently about something, hence she thought it would be okay for her to come in. Jacob firmly asked her not to disturb us again and she nodded meekly. Although this issue was solved, this wasn't her only weird behavior towards Jacob. If me and Jacob would disagree on something, even on small things like movies, and if sister-in-law was around, she would start telling him how he should date someone who had similar tastes like him and that we were clearly wrong for each other. Jacob would shoot her a disapproving look, but she would just smirk. Another incident would be where she would ask me uncomfortable questions about my past, trying to dig into my life. 
Jacob and I had been honest about each other's past from the very beginning, but I didn't feel comfortable sharing it with his sister. But regardless of my feelings, she would ask me uncomfortable questions like, why did your ex break up with you? Were you not good enough for him? Or say comments like, my brother's past girlfriend was so much prettier than you. All of these questions and comments would be whenever she and I were left alone. I slowly started to suspect that she was trying to play this game with me and put me down. Initially, I kept my mouth shut, but over the days when it continued one day, I had just enough. I replied back to her taunt, saying how I liked my ex-boyfriend's family more than Jacob's family, since my ex-boyfriend didn't have nosy, overbearing family members. Sister-in-law looked surprised at my reaction, and this seemed to shut her up for a while. What I had told her was basically true. Even though sister-in-law did have a weird relationship with my husband, mother-in-law was no better than her. When I first came into his life, my mother-in-law would ignore me, but once she realized that Jacob and I were getting serious, she started behaving like I was trying to steal her son away from her. She would purposefully ignore me at dinner or during family functions and act like I didn't exist. Jacob sometimes noticed this and would try to talk to her about it, but she has never changed. Mother-in-law once even called me stuck up and spoiled. Just because my parents sent me to private school and she was a public school teacher. I even know she tried to talk Jacob out of marrying me and told him to keep looking for a better partner than me. Fortunately, my husband didn't care about her opinion and proposed to me anyway. When mother-in-law and sister-in-law found out that he had proposed, they freaked out. Both of them called to tell me that perhaps this was a bad decision and since Jacob won't listen to them, I should end the relationship and give him back the ring. I found it very weird and refused to tell them that they were crossing a line by asking me to do something like this when I love Jacob and wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. When they realized that they couldn't convince me, mother-in-law changed her tune and begrudgingly told me that I should strive to be the best wife for him and take care of him the way that she has taken care of him all these years. I was a bit offended, but I tried to not take more offense to her words. Sarah, on the other hand, told me that I was clearly just a gold digger and that her brother deserves someone much more of his status. She threatened that she would make sure to expose me before our marriage so that Jacob would never marry me. After this conversation, I immediately talked to Jacob about everything, and he was taken aback at how rude they were towards me. He fought with them over this, but both mother-in-law and sister-in-law stuck to their tune that I wasn't good enough for him. He told me to ignore them and that he loved me regardless of what they thought. Although his words were comforting, I did feel bad that his own family wouldn't accept me. Jacob and I had already decided to pay for our own wedding, so when mother-in-law offered to pay for half of our expenses, we declined graciously, with Jacob telling her how hard we had worked to save money just for this occasion. Instead of being happy for us, this made her even more upset, and she started to tell Jacob how sad she was that he didn't need her anymore. But Jacob's dad seemed very proud of us. His dad, unlike his sister and mother, was quite cool-headed and never had a problem with our relationship. Since mother-in-law continued to complain to Jacob, we compromised by telling her that we would love it if she wanted to organize the rehearsal dinner for us. She agreed, and we appreciated the gesture. However, as the wedding approached, things took an unexpected turn. The first incident was when sister-in-law invited herself to have dinner with us, telling Jacob how much she missed him. By this time, Jacob and I were living on our own after our engagement, so we thought she genuinely wanted to spend time with her brother, so we agreed. Jacob asked me clearly if I was okay with having dinner with her, and I begrudgingly agreed, as I didn't want to be rude to my sister-in-law, who was soon going to be my family. While we were having a good meal, sister-in-law, seemingly out of the blue, started talking about how she absolutely detested cheating partners and cheaters were nothing but useless pieces of shit. We looked at her curiously, thinking where she was going with this. 
When sister-in-law looked me square in the face and asked me how it felt to be a useless piece of shit. My brows furrowed in confusion and then sister-in-law began to yell, accusing me of having an affair with my co-worker, Zach. Jacob asked her what she meant by that and sister-in-law triumphantly began pulling out pictures of me and one of my co-workers, waving them around and insisting that she had caught me red-handed. I already knew that I had never been unfaithful to Jacob since we started dating, so I was curious as well as to why she thought I was having an affair with my co-worker. Looking through the pictures, they look quite harmless. It's true, Zach and I were close co-workers, but it's only because we had both started in the company at the same time, and we helped each other whenever we made any mistakes so that our boss didn't reprimand us later. Zach even had a girlfriend, and Jacob knew about that. I don't have a lock on my phone and I had always been quite upfront to Jacob about all my co-workers. These casual moments captured in the photos were twisted by my sister-in-law into something they were not. Evident of an imaginary affair, in reality it was far from her unfounded accusations and I felt a surge of annoyance at her attempts to tarnish my integrity and strain my relationship with Jacob. Before I could speak to defend myself, Jacob, shocked and visibly upset, stepped in for me. He asked my sister-in-law why she was following me around and taking pictures of me with my co-workers at various public places without anyone's consent. Sister-in-law, hearing this, started justifying that she only wanted to investigate me since I wasn't of their status and she was afraid that I was marrying him to take away his money. Jacob firmly told sister-in-law that her claims were baseless and that she was creating unnecessary drama out of nothing. He tried to reason with her, asking her to stop spreading lies and trying to harm our relationship. But sister-in-law kept yelling at him that he should open his eyes to the obvious affair that was going on. I also tried to tell her that we were just co-workers, but she vehemently stuck to her statements. The atmosphere grew tense as her accusations intensified. I had enough of her accusations and yelling, so I told sister-in-law that I was going to file a police case against her for illegally taking my pictures and stalking me. Her expression turned petrified as she looked at me and asked if I was serious. I told her that clearly I had all the evidence and she had purposefully stalked me and taken these photographs of me with my co-workers without my consent and was trying to defame me with ridiculous lies. Sister-in-law looked at Jacob and then me and started to plead that this was all just to protect her brother and she didn't think it was such a big deal. She started to beg Jacob to talk to me since she had done all this for him and if I filed a case it would hamper her work and her future. I firmly told sister-in-law that only she could save herself at this point. Sister-in-law asked me what it was that I wanted and I told her that I was not going to file a case against her as long as she stayed far away from my life. At this point, there was nothing that she could do to escape the situation. She looked at her brother, but Jacob supported me and told her that she should be grateful that I was willing to let this go, since what she had done was clearly wrong. Sister-in-law begrudgingly agreed to stay away from me, and since that day, she and I haven't talked. Jacob continues to have a relationship with her, but she has never dared to talk to me after that. Now, the second incident that occurred before our wedding was just the night before the wedding during our rehearsal dinner. Mother-in-law, who had insisted on taking responsibility for our rehearsal dinner, declined our offer to help her in any way leading up to the event and told us that she was going to take care of it. However, upon arrival, it became evident that the preparations were not as anticipated. The rehearsal dinner turned out to be a collection of plastic tablecloths on picnic tables and cold Mexican food. During dinner, she kept acting upset and it made the whole celebration feel a bit off. She got drunk and started behaving inappropriately with the other guests saying she couldn't wait for the wedding stuff to be over and how stressful it had been even though she did not contribute financially or in any planning. Eventually, my father-in-law got pissed also and escorted her out. My sister-in-law tried to protest, trying to justify her mother's behavior, but my father-in-law refused to listen to her. 
As you can imagine, it was a complete disaster and I started freaking out that both these women would somehow spoil my wedding the next day as well. That night, Jacob and I had our first fight. I told him firmly that he needed to uninvite both sister-in-law and mother-in-law, since clearly with the way that they were behaving, they would definitely do something to upstage us during the wedding. My husband vehemently refused and tried to assure me that father-in-law would be there and he wouldn't let them get away. Then I had to threaten Jacob that if he didn't uninvite his mother and sister, there would be no wedding the next day. Jacob was visibly shocked by my demand as I knew exactly how I sounded, but I was anxious thinking about what these women would be up to. I didn't want to be embarrassed again in front of my family and friends on my wedding day. Jacob clearly didn't have strong boundaries, but I hoped with this ultimatum he would understand just how much they were starting to affect our relationship. Thankfully, Jacob did understand and made the right choice. He called his dad early in the morning and let him know that his mother and sister were uninvited. Father-in-law didn't even seem surprised and assured him that he would make sure that mother-in-law and sister-in-law wouldn't show up uninvited. After a few months of our conversation with father-in-law, mother-in-law and sister-in-law started calling Jacob continuously, clearly to convince him to let them come to his wedding, but Jacob firmly told them that after how they behaved with me throughout our relationship, he didn't feel comfortable with them during the wedding. Hearing this, mother-in-law started telling him how bad of a woman I was for coming in between him and his mother, and sister-in-law tried to reason with him as well, but Jacob stuck to his guns. I did feel bad that father-in-law couldn't come to our wedding because of his wife and sister, and believe me, I felt horrible for my ultimatum, but all my guilty feelings went down the drain when I later learned from some of Jacob's cousins that sister-in-law and mother-in-law had planned on wearing white dresses to our wedding. They told me how they all had a family WhatsApp group where there were only female members, and in this group, sister-in-law had encouraged others to wear white, also saying how there was no reason for bride to be the only one wearing white. I was shocked at how low they could just hurt me. After learning of this, I was glad that they were uninvited. Jacob did miss his family, but he also understood where I was coming from. Overall, we had a great wedding and no one tried to upstage us. But since that day, mother-in-law and sister-in-law stopped talking to me completely, which made me very glad, and I was perfectly comfortable with it. They would only invite my husband over for dinner or on special occasions, which I didn't mind terribly. Father-in-law, on the other hand, was kind to me and we continued to stay in touch. Over the years, Jacob and I saved our money meticulously and eventually bought a new house this year. It is our very first home and as you can imagine, we were very excited about finally owning something this huge. His parents and sister-in-law did come to visit our place for a small housewarming celebration and on that day, to avoid them, I visited my parents and spent some time with my family. Now, coming to the main issue, last month, out of the blue, my mother-in-law called me. This was very, very unexpected since she and I have never talked with each other since the day I got married to Jacob. Surprisingly, she asked me casually about how I had been and how my life was going. I was a bit taken by her sudden interest, but I answered her questions regardless. Then... She started asking how it felt to live in such a huge house when it was just me and Jacob. Her words stung because Jacob and I had been wanting to get pregnant for a long time, but due to some infertility issues, I was unable to get pregnant. Jacob knew about this, and although we mourned that we might never be able to have children of our own, we had eventually accepted it. I had told Jacob several times when I first found out the news that he was welcome to divorce me if he wanted to so he could eventually marry someone else and have his own children. But Jacob had always stuck by me. He loved me and told me that it was okay for us to be childless as long as we had each other. Obviously, our families also knew about this, which is why mother-in-law subtly commented about it. She then went on to inform me that my sister-in-law was pregnant. I was shocked to hear this since this was going to be her sixth child. I had heard from Jacob how jobless her husband was and didn't believe in using a condom, which would lead to these accidental pregnancies. Sister-in-law's partner was the epitome of laziness and did nothing around the house to help her or the kids. 
I have heard from Jacob that he treats sister-in-law like his personal maid. He never even pays any bills around the house. Sister-in-law works multiple part-time jobs while he spends the whole day gaming. Despite how much everyone has talked with her, sister-in-law never breaks up with him. My mother-in-law then continued saying that since sister-in-law could no longer afford to keep working throughout her pregnancy, she thought it would be a good idea for me and Jacob to give up our place since it was too big for a childless couple like us. I was taken aback by her demand and struggled to form words. I asked her if she was joking with me, but mother-in-law went on to say that she was in fact very serious and that sister-in-law and her husband deserved to live in a bigger house, but since she did not have space at her own house to let them move in, she had asked them to move in with us. The weight of this announcement hung in the air and I found myself trying to compose a response amid the whirlwind of emotions that now enveloped me. I explained to her how that this was our home, which we were still paying for. The notion of someone else moving in with us so abruptly without even asking for our permission was intrusive and ridiculous. However, my mother-in-law insisted, emphasizing that she had already talked with Jacob and he had agreed with this. This seemed bizarre as me and Jacob always shared everything with each other and I knew for sure that he would have definitely told me the news if he had agreed to let his sister and her family stay with us. I firmly told mother-in-law that since the house belonged to both me and Jacob, he couldn't give permission all on his own without my consent. No one was allowed to live here with us without both of us agreeing to it. To compromise, I told her that I would be happy to host sister-in-law and her husband for a few days if that's what they wanted, but I wouldn't allow them to move in with me. Mother-in-law, on the other hand, started to yell at me that making space for my sister-in-law and her husband was expected of me as a dutiful daughter-in-law, and if I agreed to her demands, all our past issues would be forgiven. So in anger, I replied to her, sure, I'll be happy to let them have our place, but you see, we are still paying for this place, and I know that if sister-in-law and her husband move in, they won't be helping us with the mortgage or the bills. Hence, I think you should take some responsibility and help pay for sister-in-law, her husband, and her children to live in our house. I'll be happy if you can pay just the mortgage for us and we can cover the bills for everyone. I know that you won't be able to pay the mortgage with just the one job you have, so tell me when you're getting a second job to pay off the debt. Mother-in-law, hearing this, erupted in a fit of rage, shouting and expressing her displeasure. She told me that it was ridiculous of me to ask her to pay the mortgage for us and I retorted back that it was equally ridiculous for her to expect us to take care of sister-in-law's family and to let them move in. This pissed her off even more and she continued to yell while I smiled in satisfaction. She disconnected the call when she realized that I wasn't going to give in to her demands. Soon after, my sister-in-law called, yelling at me for daring to ask her mother to pay our mortgage. She continued saying how she always knew that I was just a gold digger and I told her that it was she who was being a gold digger for trying to live with us. And if she ever wanted to see who the real gold digger was in the family, then she needed to look at her own partner who did nothing to help her out. This seemed to shut her up. I firmly told her that she could bicker with me all she wanted, but I am never allowing her family into our house unless they wanted to help us with our mortgage. She accused me of being heartless and prioritizing money over family. The tables had turned and I felt relief at the prospect of standing up for myself and not backing down, regaining control of my home. However, I do feel a bit guilty thinking about my ex-husband and I am here on Reddit wondering if what I have done makes me an a-hole. Update 1. Thank you to everyone who has shown their support for me. To answer the most important question that everyone keeps asking, why would mother-in-law even demand such a ridiculous thing from us? It's because my mother-in-law has always been this entitled. Clearly, my husband has let this charade go on for far too long, and he and I need to sit down and have a serious talk about this. It's pathetic how mother-in-law can lie about her own son just to get her own way. My sister-in-law is just a pawn in her play who goes along with whatever her mom wants. Because mother-in-law has always heavily favored my husband, sister-in-law just listens to whatever her mommy says in the hopes that mother-in-law favors her as well. In this case, sister-in-law stood to gain from this situation since she could depend on us to pay for her bills and take care of her children while her worthless husband would do nothing. 
I am waiting for my husband to be back from his business trip so we can talk. I don't want to discuss this over the phone with him since it's too important. Update 2. It's been three days since my last update. As I had mentioned earlier, I was waiting for my husband to be back. When he returned and we could finally sit down and talk, I told him about how his mother had called me demanding that we give up on our house for his sister and her family. Jacob was clearly taken aback hearing this and I went on to tell him the entire story. He then confessed that he had no idea about all of this and that the only thing his mother had told him before he went on the trip was that his sister was pregnant. That's all he knew about the situation. He had no idea that she would make such ridiculous demands. I told him firmly that I expected him to talk to mother-in-law regarding this and deal with the situation since I can't handle his family and he agreed. He called mother-in-law in front of me and asked her why she had lied to me about him. Caught red-handed, mother-in-law tried to backtrack saying that she didn't exactly lie and that she knew he would have no problem with his sister living with us, so she had decided to take matters into her own hands and ask me directly. Jacob stopped her mid-track and asked her why she assumed that he would have no problem with sister-in-law and her entire family moving in. Mother-in-law told him that he and sister-in-law were close, so obviously that would mean that he would have liked to help her out by allowing her family to move in. Hearing this, I closed my eyes in frustration, but I kept my mouth shut since Jacob needed to handle his mother. My husband then firmly told her that there was no way that he was letting sister-in-law her jobless husband and her six children move in with us and that she had no right to force us to take care of them. Mother-in-law started yelling that sister-in-law really needed someone at this point, but my husband told her that it wasn't our responsibility and that if she wanted, then she should take care of sister-in-law. Mother-in-law then began to say how father-in-law didn't want that and that their house was too small, but we were living in such a huge house so we could easily help out sister-in-law. She even went on to say, since I was childless anyway, I could help sister-in-law's kids and this would make me feel fulfilled. My eyes widened in shock, but for the first time I watched my husband's face change color. He yelled back at her that she had no right to say something so insensitive about me and that she couldn't use that against me to force me to take care of sister-in-law's children. He continued telling her that father-in-law rightfully didn't want anything to do with sister-in-law since she had become like a child birthing machine and that he was done with the both of them. Mother-in-law tried to backtrack but Jacob continued to yell at her that he had tried his best to have a good relationship with them even after they had continuously disrespected me but he couldn't take this anymore. Mother-in-law started begging him but Jacob told her that this was our house and I was his wife and anyone who disrespected me disrespected him as well and didn't deserve to stay in his life. With those final words Jacob cut the call. Since then he has had no contact with both sister-in-law and mother-in-law. Father-in-law did call to talk to him, but after learning of the entire incident, he understood exactly why Jacob had taken such a drastic decision. Father-in-law talked and apologized to me on behalf of his wife, but I told him that it wasn't his fault anyway. Update 3. It's been an interesting two weeks. A lot of people suggested I install cameras around my place just in case mother-in-law and sister-in-law decided to show up and create a scene, so I did order them online and install them all around my place. Well, as luck would have it, they did decide to show up last weekend knocking at my door while I was all alone. When I saw that they were here from my camera, I called Jacob immediately and he said he was on his way. When I opened the door, there they were. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law looking furious. They demanded I let them in, but I stood my ground, refusing to allow them entry and telling them that if they had anything to talk about, they could talk to me from outside also. Mother-in-law started yelling about how heartless I was, accusing me of being greedy and selfish. I calmly told her that this was our home and they had no right to barge in uninvited. Mother-in-law continued her tirade, unaware of the cameras capturing every moment. I calmly reminded her of our previous conversation, reiterating that I would not be giving up my home for sister-in-law and her husband, and that if she had anything further to talk about, she should wait for Jacob to come back home. 
Sister-in-law in turn started to yell that I was breaking up the family for no reason and that I was being too stubborn. She told me that not only was I a gold digger like she had always known, but now I was trying to take her brother away from them. I then informed them that whatever they were saying was being recorded in our cameras and that I would be using this evidence to get a restraining order against them so next time they couldn't come 50 feet near our house. Their eyes widened in shock and mother-in-law yelled that I wouldn't dare do that. I smirked at her and told her that if they didn't get out of our property this very minute, she would be receiving a legal order very soon. This scared them straight, and my sister-in-law started to say how I was overreacting and that it wasn't a big deal. Fortunately, at this point, Jacob arrived. He walked towards us calmly and asked mother-in-law what they were doing there. Mother-in-law rushed to hug him, but he deflected her and asked her firmly again what she and sister-in-law were doing here. Sister-in-law started to say that they knew that it was me who was trying to control his life by not letting him talk to us and that they had come here to confront me. I rolled my eyes at how absurd they both sounded. Jacob clarified to both of them that it was he who had made the decision to go no contact and that he did not want anything to do with the both of them. Mother-in-law started to beg him at this point to forgive her but he simply asked them to leave the property or he would have no choice but to call the police. Their eyes widened in shock. Clearly, both of them had not expected this reaction from him. Jacob went on to tell them that if they ever showed up at our house again, then he and I would be free to call the police on them and have them removed forcefully. They looked devastated, but Jacob didn't care anymore. I felt relieved that my husband was finally standing up for me. Eventually, both of them left, still fuming. Since then, Jacob has talked with father-in-law also, who was as shocked as us that mother-in-law and sister-in-law had gone behind his back to show up at our house unannounced. He assured us that we were right not to let them in. He is also becoming increasingly frustrated with their behavior. I know that with Jacob being so firm about it and kicking them out, they will not dare set foot on our property ever again. If they do, well, I will contact the lawyer and send them a notice immediately. I am glad that my husband has finally realized how toxic his family is, and hopefully they won't trouble us anymore so we can peacefully live our lives. I hope this is my last update since I want to move on from this situation as well. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.